DMVR Broncos live coming to you from Studio X, where the X stands for extremities. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll explain that later. Uh, first, what's up, boys? What's going on? Not much. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I had a great time watching practice through everyone's Twitter feeds. I may <laughs> have had the most fun ever watching Broncos practice for about the 30 minutes that it was really going. Wow. It was I, pretty incredible. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I can't wait. Tell me more. Well, so the defense absolutely dominated to the point where they were doing Shane Ray-esque type of clowning on the offense, if you know what I'm picking up there, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, I think we've told that story on the on Maybe. The pod I feel before. like it's a, it's okay time to tell yeah, that. Yeah, uh, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Uh, it's a Monday in the locker room right after the Broncos lost to, at the time, I'm, am I allowed to say it? Sure. Uh, I think so. No, the, the, four, the Washington football team. Oh, yeah, I know <laughs> what you're saying. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, at the time, it was a different name, um, which is embarrassing in its own right. Yep. Um, and who was the pass rusher on the Washington football team? Kerrigan? Yes. Yep. Ryan Kerrigan had just owned Garrett Bowles in yep. the game before. Was he a rookie at the time? Uh, Shane? No, Garrett. No, I think sh- – no, you're right. He may have been a rookie. Garrett Bowles might have been a rookie. And so it's the next day, and, like, in After a loss in December, the team's going nowhere. Everyone's upset. Yep. Meanwhile, Shane Ray is just mocking what happened to Garrett Bowles. Like, Garrett Bowles got bull rushed by Ryan Kerrigan, and so Shane Ray's like, oh, look, I'm Garrett, and just, like, falls on the ground. And I was yep. just like, wow. <laughs> right in front of <laughs> Right Garrett. in front of his face, yep. man. Yeah, and then he's just laughing about it and does it one or two more times. Oh. And we're just standing there like, is Garrett going to pick this guy up and kill him? Yeah, like, I really thought there was going to be a fight. <laughs> and that's kind of the dysfunction. That was the big offense versus defense year. Yeah, yeah. And so it was like such a highlight of the dysfunction that was going on between the offense and defense that had kind of escalated with like that Michael Silver story yep. about how Aqib Tlaib like, blamed yep. the offense the in the locker room after match. a lot. Yep. Yeah, yep. So, yeah, that was a – so th- that's a – there that's was, a lot. There was that type of clowning because that's how dominant the defense was. And we're talking about in red zone. And typically in mm-hmm. red zone, the offense has the advantage because we're also not talking about starting at the 18 or 20-yard line. We're talking about starting within the 10 every single time. And as the plays went on and no touchdowns were scored, Nathaniel Hackett kept moving the ball closer and closer and closer. Now, maybe there would have been one touchdown. That was probably on the script. Maybe. I don't know. The offense needed everything they could do to get help. And Javante maybe would have scored a touchdown, but I even don't think so on a running play. Ryan, I kid you not, there were between 15 and 20 offensive plays within the 10-yard line for the first and second team. Zero touchdowns. Sheesh. Zero touchdowns. And, and as Henry can attest to, every time that another one didn't go in, the defense got louder, and the defense <laughs> got crazier, and it was so bad, in fact, that at one point, oh my favorite, there's a play that Russell's going to the right. It's it's an immediate run to the right. Uh, Russ is going to the right to try to find someone open. He would have been sacked by five different guys. I kid you not. Within a second, no one blocked. That was not intentional. Obviously, it was not a screen or anything. He would have been sacked. So you don't touch the quarterback. And so Russ kind of then rolls out to the left and throws a pass. Ronald Darby. There's only one corner or one wide receiver in in the end zone. Ronald Darby's on him, smothering him. Back to Russell Wilson when he throws the ball. Darby just turns around. The ball hits him right in the chest for an interception. I mean, that's how bad it was. And then right after, you have Caden Stearns doing somersaults in the end zone <laughs> to celebrate. Just on the, the back side of the play. Of the defense is just screaming and hooting and hollering. It's so Sheesh. good. All right. Um, it's so good. I mean, I guess I'm going to pour a little cold water on this. Mm. Um, wow. I am not okay with the offense being okay with this. Ah, okay. So then it got even more intense with the clowning uh, because after that terrible red zone period was over, uh, the offense huddled up, and that typically means it's really bad. So the offense is huddled up right around the 50. The defense doesn't stop. The defense then goes and surrounds the offense and continues to clown (laughs) them when they're in their offensive huddle up, 
and uh, the defense does it for, you know, the huddle's 30 seconds. The defense does it for 20 <laughs> seconds, and it is just an absolute clown show. They are just teasing them so much, hooting and hollering. It was so good. <sighs> I will never forget Caden Stern just on the backside of a play just doing somersaults you across said, the said, back of the end You said he did zone. that twice? I think there I were two rounds once. of somersaults. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The, the, that was the big one, though. Yeah. I mean, we get like everybody's just going crazy again, fifteen yards away, just doing somersaults. Yeah. <laughs> so, so my issue with this actually goes all the way back to last week, where we were talking all about how there's six fights on one field, zero fights on mm. the other field, and we're like, yeah, that defense has that dog mm-hmm. in them, you know. Yeah. Uh, and meanwhile, the offense, you know, obviously the the Cowboys defense wasn't starting anything either, but you're like, no, oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting dichotomy. You can't allow that to happen without someone shoving someone, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, these guys, they came into your huddle? Yeah. Yeah. Someone's got to turn around and shove someone. I'm sorry. (laughs) Like, I'm not pro-fighting your teammates. Don't be throwing punches. Someone's got to get two hands in their chest for all of that. I have to say, I'm shocked that there wasn't a fight. Especially, even after the first five plays, I'm like, oh, man, this defense is intentionally doing this to get under the offensive skin. Right, they're trolling them. Something's going to happen. And then it just kept escalating, and the offense did nothing. So it's it's a good point. And you kept thinking, like, they're going to get one of these in. Like, it's going to be okay. Like, the twos are going to go in there. They're going to find a gap against the twos. Still a great day for the defense. Whatever. It just never happened, though. And then the ones go back in, and it never happens. And the twos go back in, and it never happens again. you're just like, oh, my goodness. I've never seen anything like it. How do you not score from five yards away? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, then the offense did pick it up, and they scored a touchdown at the end of mm-hmm. practice on a good two-minute drill. Did uh, they let him have it back? No, no. no. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't what is that. happening? <laughs> uh, they would have been laughed at if they tried to talk after one drive. You, you, I mean, but you get you literally get the last laugh. Like, right. You, it's know, like, you know who would have been that guy? Tim Patrick, potentially. Me and my buddies used to do this thing where we would just – punch each other like really hard in the arm oh i don't geniuses. understand that at all like in, in the back of the car like in the back of the car you're just being socking each other in the arm and then eventually like whoever's driving the parent would be like hey stop that like if that if another one of you does something like i'm stopping the car or whatever so then if you got the last one you just be like yes yes and like you just knew there was nothing they yep. could do so you could just taunt them all you wanted yep that's what the offense should have done like they have the last lap um, practice is over you could just be like Oh, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I got the last touchdown. No. Yeah, what you say? <laughs> it would have felt a lot like the like you ever see that like meme where it's like, oh, Drew Locke drops back. He's playing the Broncos. Like, oh, he hits the the guy in the end zone the last play, and the Seahawks lose thirty seven to seven. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It'd be just like that. We're just like, okay, congrats on that one. Like, they needed five of those drives to even yeah. come close to being able to say anything. You got to do something. You can't they, though. You can't. I, I, you at least had to shove somebody. You That's, would have gotten. I'm gonna die on that hill. Like. Uh, yeah. And, and my question, I guess, is who's this supposed to be? Like, I've, I've got a couple candidates. Definitely Garrett Bowles. That, that's the first one that pops yep. in my mind. Got, like, someone has to stand up for that offense and be like, fine, I'll be the, the goon here mm-hmm. who has to fight for us. Cortland Sutton, I'd like to see it out of him. Yep. Um, and then the other one maybe would be Melvin Gordon. Mm. Those are the three people that I think, like, be that leader for the offense. It's not going to be Russ. Um, you know, he's one of the coaches. Um, someone has to do it. Someone has to be like, Hey, we're not going to take this. Like Emmanuel Sanders would have done it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why I think Tim would have been the guy. Tim probably would have been the guy. So that's, this is good. This is actually a great learning experience for this team. Nathaniel Hackett should bring it to him tomorrow and be like, Hey, I think if Tim was here, he wouldn't have taken that from them. So, like, which one of you guys is going to be the one to stand up for yourselves? I like that. I, I like that a lot. And after practice, Nathaniel yeah. Hackett joked about it. He said, uh, "He said, yeah, I was the defensive coach for the first couple periods of practice when I switched <laughs> over to the good. offense. It was so <laughs> That's good. great. I got to say, though, watching Nathaniel Hackett, uh, he was very far away, so I couldn't see everything. He looked pissed. At what was going on. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised since uh, Hackett and Evero are such boys that there's not more of, I don't know if you saw this from the first episode of Hard Knocks, but um, you've got, oh gosh, what's the name of the offensive coordinator of the Lions? He was like a running back. Is it Deuce McAllister? No, it, no, but it is a Deuce. Deuce, okay. Double okay. Deuce. Yeah, Deuce yeah. and Deuce Aaron Glenn. Deuce Staley, maybe. Is that oh, And Aaron Glenn so. yeah. uh, is the defensive coordinator. Yeah. And these two are, like, best friends, mm-hmm. but they go at it mm-hmm. in practice. Mm-hmm. Like, to the point where it was, like, kind of uncomfortable watching yeah. the video. I'm like, this is weird. Um, but they're just, like, screaming at each other <laughs> yeah. in practice. Like, so, like fighting words. Um, 
fan, you know, nothing ever comes of it. But yeah. I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen Nathaniel Hackett and Evero like go back and forth a little bit. They don't. Even, I don't even think they talk in practice. My guess is it's Nathaniel trying to be the head coach instead sure. of just the offensive mm-hmm. coordinator. For sure. Well, how about Outen? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he he goes back and forth with Kareem Jackson. Okay. And I gotta good. say, Justin Simmons, he's a different guy. Justin Simmons used to be the calm guy <laughs> who just made plays and, and was cool about it. Maybe wagged his finger. No, he is Kareem Jackson now. I can, and especially yep. with Kareem Jackson not practicing today, he's fine. Just an old day. Old day. Uh, but, Ryan, you're going to have one of those soon? I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, I think you're due for one. We have tomorrow off, don't we? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, without him, I mean, he was Kareem Jackson out there. Wow. The other piece of all that is, like, I'm not sure the I, – I don't go to practice thinking, like, ah, these guys should be more like the Detroit Lions. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying they should. I'm just saying I'm surprised okay, that there yeah. isn't more back and forth yeah. between those two mm-hmm. because, you know, Hackett's the other day talking about how they used to play video games in college together. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. It's kind of crazy to think about. Shout out to Madden. Also, did, did anyone follow up on that? Like, do you think play, anyone there's anything to be learned from Madden? Oh, no, no. It was, uh, he was followed up about a different video game. So, no miss yeah. um <laughs> just, just the lazy denver media <laughs> <added again. laughs> lazy denver media <laughs> like i i 100 learned coverages from madden yeah like i can just if i'm sitting in the press box i have like the full field view i'm like oh they're in this they should look here on the field and you Brett makes it tougher Huh? New Madden makes it tougher. Oh, All right, that's good. Uh-huh. <laughs> Is that out officially now? I, I think, think so. so. I'm yeah. not Today. paying them an extra thirty bucks for three days. <laughs> Is that what? Oh, yeah. Pre-order was more expensive. If you it, no, you could get like the ec, the whatever oh, edition, the and then you could get like whatever oh, right, for the right, dumb right. game mode. But like you don't play. Nobody plays that. Some extra so mutt like, yeah. points. Oh, Some nice. Mutt points. <laughs> um, but it was thirty extra bucks wow. essentially to get three extra days. I was like, you know nope. what? You're not gouging me like this. <laughs> nope. I'll uh, I'll take a three day. Um, I'll give three day head start to anyone in the league who <laughs> wants to jump in on that. Hmm. Speaking of gouging, are the Bills gonna gouge the Broncos this weekend? So uh, I presented a theory on the bet show that I'll, I tested it out. I felt like it went well. I'm going to bring it back okay, here. Okay. Okay. Um, Get ready to kill it, Henry. Okay. Sean McDermott mm-hmm. said, quote, the starters are going to play a healthy amount. Now mm-hmm. think about this. Yep. <laughs> What's the healthiest amount? <laughs> Zero. Zero, because that's the only way to stay healthy. I think he's just doing a bit. Mm. Just kidding. Um, That'd be good, though. <laughs> you, you're going to see them score one or two touchdowns. Yep. Um, I mean, Josh Allen is like pretty much unstoppable for once in the NFL. Yep. Uh, so, you know, you're putting the twos out there against Josh Allen and the ones. Um, they're going to score. I, I think, I could be wrong. I think they go one, they're just going to go like bang, 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 touchdown, and they'll be done. Yeah, I think they'll probably get a quarter, which is probably bang, 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 touchdown, touchdown, field goal. Okay. Oh, you think they're going to score 17 points in the first quarter? Potentially. Wow. Potentially. Oof. We're talking about Josh, the best, uh, one of the best offenses in the NFL going up against backups. Super Bowl favorites. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bills, which is interesting to me. Um, even though I kind of agree with it, I feel like it's Josh Allen's time. Um, I don't think they're going to play that much. You just get like a little confidence builder and you, you go out. Well, I mean, two touchdowns. You know, what's crazy is this is actually, if I was Sean McDermott, and I'll go into a different world where I like playing my players in the preseason. I'm even less inclined to do it knowing that the Broncos aren't playing anyone. Yeah. Because I'm just like, well, that doesn't help us. We're not getting real game speed. We're getting backups. And on top of that, it, the backups are hungrier. And that yep. could mean and that they're going faster huh. and harder and trying to do things, extra things to make plays. Yeah. I had that going the other way. I was more worried about the Broncos getting hurt, just going up against bigger and stronger and all that but it's not like that i mean that kind of would be more so our conversation yesterday about a college team playing an nfl team these backups aren't like smaller they're just not as good think about i'm thinking like if i'm sean mcdermott i'm envisioning in my head like oh man nick benito gets off the edge and he's like sniffing his first sack and so he lunges he dives and he and you know and the ball's well out by this point but he's so hungry for that that you know he gets he gets a helmet into josh's elbow or something like that Mm -hmm. yep that's what i would be terrified of yep a hundred percent and we know that remember vaughn used to sorry to to interrupt but remember vaughn used to say like yeah i don't really try to like hit the quarterbacks in the preseason yeah which is fair and smart but 
these guys aren't Vaughn. Right, exactly. And now Vaughn, he should not be playing. There is no reason for Vaughn to play this game. But if if McDermott's playing Josh Allen, Josh Allen's more valuable to that team than Vaughn Miller. So if you're more having... More valuable to that team than any player is to their team in the NFL. I disagree. Yeah. Okay. I think Patrick Mahomes. But, I mean, we're talking yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, Those same players. Um, but if, if they're playing Josh Allen, you play Vaughn Miller. Now... Do I think that Von Miller would gain anything from playing in this game? Absolutely not. Do I think Josh Allen would gain anything from playing in this game? Absolutely not. But this makes me nervous about this game for the Broncos in terms of Von Miller and the damage he could do to the Broncos' tackles, specifically <laughs> Good God. Calvin Anderson and Cam Fleming. And, guys, this yep. is the number one thing that I'm watching for in this game. It's going to be brutal. I'll it's going to be this. terrible. If I am a Brandon Johnson, a Jalen Virgil, uh, Nick Benito, Baron Browning, I'm so fired up for this because I'm saying, even Calvin Anderson, I'm saying everything I do here counts at full percentage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Any play that you make in this game has no discount on it. Right. Um, At least as close as you can have to a real game. So, like, this film that you put out there in this game is worth three times as much as anything you did in the last game. And that should be a really, really awesome opportunity for those guys. That's what I'm looking forward to is just like, can these guys actually show it? You know, the guys that we've seen make plays throughout camp, mostly with the two, some with the ones, um, can they really show it in, against a real NFL offense or defense? I agree. They, they, this is like, uh, however, a sixth grader playing against the varsity basketball team. And it's like, if you can beat these guys, you've got great tape going into high school. <laughs> Not even beat but them. It's like, it's like if you can get a bucket yeah, on these guys. Yeah, exactly. But then you're like, well, shit. The competition level is so daunting. Yeah, I think you're overestimating. I think it's more JV going against varsity. Okay. Um, but I'm thinking more varsity. so. I'm more so thinking, yeah, I'm more so thinking the mismatches here. Well, in terms and of the Calvin Anderson and the Von Millers oof. and the Josh Allens uh, and the... Uh, PJ Watt? Uh, yeah, and, and and not even the, the Turner Yells of the world. That too. And it is true. Um, but I also think it's a great opportunity for Nathaniel it Hackett yeah. to just be like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rotate in everyone uh, during this time that I think has you know any worth to our team to see what they look like against the Super Bowl favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think it's going to... like. Maybe I'm un, maybe I'm overestimating Sean McDermott's like inner dialogue. I just have to imagine they go down there and they score a touchdown real easy. He's just like, all right, I've seen enough. Get out of here. Yep, That's and smart thing. that is what the coordinator said today too. Is that this is like the best test that those young guys can have. I think somebody even asked like, ah, does it kind of make it tough to to throw them out there because you don't really know what you're gonna get? And it's like, well, no, like. We just want to see what you do against some of the best players in the NFL because if it goes well, then you're great. So they're on that same page. Love it. And a reason why I point to the right tackle position even more so for a second straight day, Billy Turner didn't practice today. Yesterday it was for personal reasons. Today, Nathaniel Hackett said he's just working on his knee, getting extra treatment on his knee. Why does he keep lying to us? Which scares the hell out of me. (laughs) Because, and then he was followed up and asked, did he see a second doctor? Is that kind of the personal day he's out of the state or something? And Hackett said no, but that scares the hell out of me. He's on PUP, comes off PUP, practices one day, and then doesn't practice. Uh, or I guess technically practices two days. Only one of them is a real practice and then does not practice the rest of the week. That, to me, guys, is terrifying because he is the savior at this position because Calvin Anderson continues to just get pushed around. And I'm I'm literally saying pushed around by smaller guys than him yep. on the practice field. Uh, did He has not looked good for a couple of weeks now, and they're rotating Cam Fleming in. Cam Fleming was literally their fourth or fifth option at right tackle this year, and now he's working in with the ones because the guy who's there right now is struggling. So if Billy Turner is having a setback, oh boy, you're just hoping and praying Tom Compton's back soon, but it does not, not look like he's going to be back yep. anytime. And yeah. Like they keep saying, you know, he's it's more training. He needs more time in the training room. Like it's like whatever that is, the treatment, all that stuff. It's like there's so much time to get treatment. Like, yeah. you don't have to get treatment during the hour and a half of football practice. Like, yep. I think it's been that's what was, to what's exactly. Going on. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I texted you guys this morning. Save us, Bronco Billy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we need Bronco Billy to save us. Um, it's that's dire to me, uh, and and it's unfortunate that it's gone poorly for Calvin Anderson. Um, it's always fun to like talk about these guys until they actually have to go do it, and rarely does it actually work out. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, I don't want Calvin Anderson to end up being no, like hated. No, by I the like fans. Calvin. I like Calvin. I mean, is there a single right tackle that has played? That isn't despised by the fans since oh. Super Bowl Fifty. No, they Not all one. are. They all maybe are. forgotten. Like I bet you, when I say this name, people were gonna be like, "Oh, I forgot about him." Alan Barber. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> forgot, about <laughs> him. forgot about him. Donald Stevenson. Yeah, Ooh. I remember him. <laughs> That's right on the edge. In fact, we actually have a commenter later in this show comparing uh, the Broncos' right tackles to one of the hated right tackles. Here. Yeah, Menelik Watson. Oh, yeah. Bottom of the barrel. Didn't you make a reference to him in a tweet uh, last week? I did. Yes. I did. I said preseason goals for the Broncos, no injuries, no mid-game proposals. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think, I don't know, I'm still taking the under for what it's worth in this Broncos game. Like, I think... Um, Do we know what it's at? 42 and a half. Oh, okay. That is higher than I would have thought. It's yeah. kind of what you said. Like, every over hit in the first eight games, yeah, so maybe Vegas adjusted. Yeah. 14 to 17 so far. Woo. Yep. And I took three unders in my big three today. I'm feeling wow. good. Starting oh, with tonight. Boy. <laughs> uh, Bear Seahawks. No oh, Drew. Yikes. Who's their third string? Do we know? <laughs> no, I don't remember. I s- no, I okay. don't remember. Right. I don't. You I have, love we, the... we, we, we would have probably had Drew versus Trevor tonight if drew didn't oh yep. no we know who to won that preseason one. football is crazy because you say things like yeah no drew lock i'm taking the under <laughs> like yeah we gotta go under there's no drew lock out there to save us i just i mean i have to assume internally the seahawks are thinking like okay gino's definitely our guy now so he's not even gonna play very much right yep i agree and even him like him playing the first half last week i was like what do you think Geno Smith is going to show you that you haven't already seen? You know Geno. Yes. You know everything about him. Yeah, it's crazy. Just like Josh Johnson. The Broncos know everything about him. He's going to be their backup, and he will start this week. Josh Johnson. Henry, I don't know if you want to come up on a settle bet, settlement oh, wow. anytime soon, but, I mean, we're like 99% there. Yeah, we absolutely are. Again, like, he, Nathaniel Hackett got asked about it. It's like, so, you know, have you figured out who the starter is? It's like, no, and we're just going to. We're still figuring all that. Who's going to be a starter this week? Like, is there a rotation or something? Like, well, we talk about those things. It's going to be it's going to be Josh Johnson. It's like it's so obvious <laughs> yeah. what's happening here. Yeah, like this oh. this has been decided. Couple comments. I'm peering over Allie's shoulder. Uh, Bobby Massey not hated. Uh, no, absolutely not. That is true. Is he available? Um, uh, he did not play football last year. No, he played for oh, the Broncos yes, yes, last yes, year. Oh, yes, 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 he did. <laughs> Wait, who was the tall guy two years ago from the Bucks? Still a free oh, agent. Oh, um, Dotson? DeMar Dotson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's um, also probably not hated. Yeah, it's time to bring both of those guys in. Bobby Massey's available? It sure is. Sign him up. Uh, and then also, J27 said, I don't see the reason on betting in the preseason. There's only one reason, to make money. Oh, okay. I was going to say fun, but to make money is it? I think there's a, there's an old movie quote. People are going to kill me for not remembering what, uh, what quote. It, I'm not even going to guess. But it's, uh, we're not in this to make money. Or no, we're not in this for the money. We're in this for a shit ton of money. Ah, That's how I feel about betting on the preseason. I have no <laughs> idea what movie that is either. Gosh, someone, tell, someone in the comments knows what that is. I'm what, sure. What was Zach's Star Wars quote? <laughs> I forgot it. <laughs> Hope is not good. <laughs> What well, we're going to use on his, uh, wait, you want that on Hope your tombstone, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hope is not good. <laughs> Hope is not good. <laughs> Star Wars. It does sound like something the, the dark side would say. Yeah, this is uh, so eloquent. <laughs> <laughs> Hope is not good. George Lucas, just, you know, <laughs> his team of writers just coming up with great stuff like that. No, Bronco, they could adopt that slogan. They could. Hope is, that's not a planet right tackle, I'll tell you that. Yes, no. Hope is not um, good. Uh, what is good is Breckenridge mm. Brewery's beers. Um, it's Thursday, but it's kind of our Friday. Is that yeah, how you guys feel? Yeah, heck yeah. Um, so might as well crack up and some Breck brews. Actually, Hank and I were drinking them on the Buffs pod last mm-hmm. night. Wow. Those things are strong. Did I see a little Juice Drop IPA? That was Jake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that's for a strong boy. That's why I call him Juicy Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Do they? Uh, yeah, I like so that. Did he Everyone's get juicy on the show then? Uh, I thought he had some juicy 
quotes. Okay. Oh. Yeah, like, Better what, than hope is not good. What, what, what was, he, was he hung and young? Yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let, you know what? Okay, let's finish the okay. reads and then okay. I'll take you through okay. that. Um, <laughs> Breck Brewery, uh, get in on some delicious ice cold, mm. frothy Breck brews mm. this weekend. You're Just speaking my language. The only way. The only way. Man, and uh, you talked about why to bet. To make money. Well, I can guarantee make a of money. you'll make a shitload of money over at DraftKings Sportsbook. For all new users, if you bet $5 on any college football game, win or lose, you get $200 in oh, wow. your account and free bets right away. That's a lot of money. That's a hundred. That's 200 free dollars in your account just by betting $5. And again, you don't even have to win. And that is a perfect place for you to start college football NFL season with $200 in your account. So head to the App Store now, download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now, and use promo code DNVR when you sign up to get this offer. That's code DNVR over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Colorado only. One per new customer, minimum $5 deposit and wager. $200 issued as $825 free best restriction supply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for, for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. And make sure you sign up for the golf tournament. Today's yes. the last, last day to sign up. Day. It's out at Raccoon Creek, uh, September 2nd. Uh, it's in the morning. Then you go watch the buffs afterward. It's going to be an awesome day. Uh, so sign up for that. Also become a member because you get all sorts of different perks. And soon the bar is going to be back. And we're going to have some new specials. And we don't know what they are. Have we know they'll be special. Okay. Mm. You still haven't decided those? I mean... I'm not uh, privy to them. <laughs> Who is privy? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Henry does not believe you. He thinks you know everything. You're just not telling him. Oh, I feel like no. you're part of those discussions. I, um, did, I did tell you guys the London plans. Eventually, yeah. he'll be a part Wait. of those discussions. First, we're focused on just getting the infrastructure of the bar ready to go. Yes. Like beer. Trying to get like beer. beer. What, we do know the London plans? Oh, well, you weren't there for that. Sorry. Damn. Damn. Every time. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> sign up, become a member, support us, comment, we'll read your comments, all that stuff. So it was from Spaceballs, that quote. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Glad I didn't guess. <laughs> <laughs> Say that. That leads right into our next topic. Yes. Um, <laughs> Ali, could you bring up the quote? Uh, I thought um, Justin Allen had a, just a really insightful yep. quote on Brandon Johnson. Yep. Today yep. he's asked about Brandon Johnson, what he's been doing, and... 6'2", 195, Brandon Johnson. Yes. Yeah. Good to keep in mind. Yep. Yeah. Really, really good to keep in mind. Big yep. guy. Long. Tall, lengthy. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Can we play that? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, we're getting an ad. No free ads. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, what is that? Oh, oh no. no. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here oh, go. perfect. He's been a, a hung, hung <laughs> individual. Excuse me? He's, he's just, he's doing all the things necessary. Uh, Can we just run that back yeah. one more time? Yeah. Bring it back to like eight seconds, maybe. What did he say before young? Uh, B's been a, a hung, young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, what a day. <laughs> Where does that rank uh, um, uh, right next to uh, I second the fucking motion? That's pretty, it's pretty good. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Also, I feel comfortable poking fun at that because I think Justin Outen would also think that was funny. Oh, I absolutely <laughs> think, yeah. think that was. That was one thing when it happened live, I, I thought, did, did, he just say that? did I hear that right? Yeah, honestly, like that's got to affect his draft position in our uh, preseason oh, draft. Too, right? wow. He goes up. Yeah, it might. Oh, something else is going up. God, that is so awesome. He was trying to go for hungry and I young. Think so, yeah, yeah. Yep. Which actually mesh, meshes together well, but then it yeah. kind of like crossed the wires. <laughs> yeah, and it. it did. Yeah. And I think you could tell in his mind, because he paused just for a second, <laughs> and was like, ah, what did I do? I and let's just keep powering through. You just hear it, and then you like look around, because you're just like, is that really what happened? You see people is like, Looking down, trying yeah. not to laugh, and yeah. he was like, "This is <laughs> that really just that, that, this yep. has got to be a time where Zach is thankful I wasn't there because oh, we yeah, absolutely we, would have made it. I would have for sure had to excuse we myself. We wouldn't have made it. Yeah, uh, 100%. So thank you, Justin, for that one. Yes, today. that's a, that is such a banger. I honestly, 
uh, like hope Brandon Johnson becomes a star so we can put Hung Young on his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He may make the team. So Hung Young individual. I think he is going to make the team. I do as well, and I dropped my 53 over at thednbr.com today, and he was my last addition because even Justin Outen later talked about Brandon Johnson and said he's earned everything he's he's been getting, including playing with the ones. And I'll tell you today, since, since Justin said it, we're allowed to say it, mm-hmm. he was playing with the ones and made two massive catches for the team today. Ooh, the offense did have a couple plays. At the very end, and it was Brandon Johnson. It was. I swear, when I see Brandon Johnson, wow, I just thought about the fact that his last name's Johnson. Um. <laughs> oh, wow. Hung Young Johnson. <laughs> That's the shirt. That is so good. Oh, oh, I kind of want to make the shirt regardless. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> just make the roster. We're good. I, I, Does the young part kind of make it a little creepy, though? Almost. Hung John. Well, <laughs> Hung Johnson. <laughs> um, I don't, I mean, he's of age. He is. Yes. He is of age. Yeah, yeah. That's yep. true. <laughs> uh, he has like, I don't know how to explain this. It's funny to go here right now, but he has like the body type of a good receiver. <laughs> uh, he just looks like, he's giving me like Brandon Lloyd or mm. something along those lines. Tall like lengthy. that lanky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um, he's, uh, his catch radius is like very large. And I, I don't know. I large. When I see him play, I'm just like, that. he looks like a receiver. He mm-hmm. looks like, you know, he has a little bit of wiggle to him. I can't oh, wow. say anything without him. <laughs> oh, oh, but uh, I think, yeah, I, I think he really makes the team. strong at the point of attack. He is, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's got great grip strength, uh, and he knows how to finish. Yeah, he does. Oh he boy! Does. Well, that's... those are all football terms. <laughs> they are. And he finished today in the end zone. Yeah, he, he, he <laughs> caught the touchdown. <laughs> Couple home run plays. Uh, so there you go. I actually, <laughs> I enjoy, I enjoy his game, and you, I think you, he's gonna make the team. You taking him one overall? How are we deciding this draft order? Gosh, I'm tempted to like. Does Henry still count as the new guy? I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys have been here for like a decade. I, <laughs> that really ages us. But yeah, it does. does. I, uh, I don't know. I, feel, I guess we have to give him pick. Yeah, like, do so you want number one or do you want a different it, pick? It is Snake, right? Yeah, Snake. Give me, give me snake. two. I'll take two. I'll take two. Two. Well, okay. All right, well. Well, well, shit, I guess I'm first. First, first, or <laughs> first or last? First or last? Oh, yeah. Wait, Literally, the to... one you chose is the one you I'll take last. Play. So, You'll real take quick, last. we haven't talked about this. Like, this is for the OGs. Mm. When was the last time we did this? Maybe two years ago? We were at training camp. we ever did camp. one with Mace? I don't think so, no. I don't either. No, so, so this we is... were at training camp. Okay, so 2019. 19, yeah. So, this is the first preseason draft since 2019. What we do um, is we each draft a team. We actually total up the fantasy points. When I say we, I mean Zach. Um, <laughs> when he says Zach, he means Henry. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> um, we total up the fantasy points. We see who won. I think it's uh, uh, it makes the preseason so much more interesting. Yeah. Um, and one other thing. Oh, since we forgot to do it last week. And last week would have ensured, well, we could do it a couple different ways. Hmm. I think that we should go total points through this week and next week wins the preseason championship rather than one of us gets a win this week, mm. one of us gets a win next week. Okay. I like it. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. All right. Perfect. But we do we do redraft next week. Redraft yes. next week, of yep. course. Yeah. The daily, daily preseason ooh, fantasy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Does the uh, winner, does the order of this week determine draft order next week? Like whoever comes out of this week ahead gets to choose – where they want to draft next week. Yeah, okay. I think that okay. works. Okay, okay. Um, let me just pull up the Bills depth chart here. <laughs> so, yeah, Ryan, you're first. Oh, no. Henry. Yeah. yeah, no, no I'm first. last. Hen- Henry got to choose first or last. But I thought then the graphics team decided he No, was I picked middle, but now we can go either end. We'll go reverse order? Yeah. Uh-huh. Snake at the top. Oh, geez. Mm. Okay. Um, this is very difficult. It is. First mm. pick can sometimes be great or terrible. I know. I'm scared. Um, he's buying time. Is what screw he's it. I'm doing it. No. Give me Hung Young Johnson. No, baby. no wow. way. Wow. Hung Young Johnson, number one overall. Can you please H-U-N. put Hung Young <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not to be confused with former Rockies pitcher Byung Young Kim. Oh, yes. yes. Everybody was confused. What? 
Just write Brandon. B, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> or you could write BJ. Um, no. <laughs> uh, and Allie, wow. he'll go in the wide receiver spot oh, for, for Ryan. No, no worries at all. Um, I can't believe you left this guy to me. Take him. I will. And I understand what you were doing, not taking him. Uh, but I'm hoping Sean McDermott's not lying to us. Mm. I hope a healthy amount is a lot. Allie, for my quarterback spot, please give me Josh. Allen. There you go. I mean, uh, you, you, you could very well get in one drive what the other quarterbacks are going to get the rest of the true. game. Yep. It's true. And if he plays three drives, then he'll have the best quarterback by far. That's what I'm hoping for. Henry, back to back. Uh, I'll, I wish I'd done this differently. Um, I'll take Zach Moss. First mm. pick, running back from the Bills. Um. Was really good last they week. Have and I think he'll play more. Running back room for a team that does not care to run the ball ever. Yeah, and that I doesn't have. have you, what they want to do is they want to take their running back depth and put it into one guy to be like the star because they don't have that star. Yeah, but they are deep. I I mean I thought they should have signed Melvin Gordon just made him their one. I agree. Um, I will also take Khalil Shakir. He nice. was maybe the best receiver in preseason last week. From Case Keenum. Yeah. Like that's who was throwing. He was yep. actually making plays. All right. Uh-huh. I like it. So now I'm up. Yep. Give me Stefan Diggs. Oh, uh, he's got Zach an Moss running back here. and Khalil Shakir wide receiver. <clears throat> All right. Do we have a spelling yeah. on that? K H A L I L S H A K I R. And that's under wide receiver for Hank. Yeah, this is this is this is tough. This is tough on Allie. <laughs> All right. K-H-A-L-I-L. <laughs> I can't remember six letters at a time. K-H-A-L-I-L. Okay. S-H-A. K-I-R. Allie, I'll take over as uh, as helping you he, uh, on this. He should know <laughs> that, too, that I'm just not good at that. <laughs> I just thought you could do the, like, listen and type at the same time thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Allie, for my wide receiver, I'm going one of my wide receivers. I'm going Stefan Diggs, S T E F O N. Okay, D I G G S. And now it's me again? Double. Yep. Doubling up. How many have any Broncos gone off the board? <laughs> no. You hung but, up. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to keep going with the Broncos here. Um. <sighs> Oh, and just to put the rules right, you can pick anyone for the flex that's not a quarterback. Yep. Right, right, right. Uh, I don't want to get – oh, jeez, what am I doing here? Wow. He doesn't like his Brandon Johnson pick. No, I <laughs> do. I'm just – I'm trying to create, come up with a strategy. I feel mm. like there's a strategy here, and I don't want to mess it up. Mm. Um. Fuck it, give me Josh Johnson. Oh, wow. wow. Two F-bombs already in the show. You're feeling it. <laughs> Man, it's Friday. <laughs> you're, up, you're up again. It is Friday. It's a Breck Brew Friday on this beautiful Basically. Thursday. Um, but then that means tomorrow's a Sunday. Well, no, because football doesn't count. That's uh, true. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Back to back. I need a... Allie, can you move a little so I can I see? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, can I go all Johnson team? Oh. <laughs> uh, I need a running back. Mm-hmm. I don't like any of the Broncos options. Go they Javante. Can't, they can't run the ball. Max Borgie's available. <laughs> the, give me James Cook. Oh. Okay. okay. Met with uh, a great ovation. Yep. <laughs> um, okay. I think there's someone on the board I need to take right now. Allie, with my other wide receiver pick, I'm going to go Kendall Hinton. Mm. I think um, the only reason I don't love this is I think the person that loves Kendall Hinton the most is Russell Wilson. And we're okay. not, not going to see Russ, but I think that's going to bleed over a little bit. And your guy, Josh Johnson, is going to be throwing touchdowns to my guy, Kendall Hinton. There you go. We got one last week. I'll take OJ Howard. Okay. I think he's in that kind of sweet spot where like he'll get a little work early. He played last week, so he'll probably keep playing quite a bit. I don't love That's it. That's a tight end for yes. uh for Henry. 
Um, so I've got two spots left. Tight end. I haven't even thought about tight end. Well, yeah, and that. Um, t- wow. Who's oh, going to go doing first? One running back. Okay. Yeah. So I'll take. I'll take Isaiah Hodgins. Boy, there's just no uh, confidence who's that? in your voice. <laughs> uh, a man who had nine catches last week. Um, Isaiah Hodges. Want me to spell that? No, I got it. Yes. Wow. Isaiah Hodges. That dude's not even. Oh, there he is. Yeah, okay. I couldn't find him either. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> nine for 77 last week. Oh, boy. Were those your two picks? Yep. Mmm. Okay. Man, I don't like this running back situation. Uh, yeah. You've drafted one? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stay away. Tight end. No one's. Oh, you've drafted a tight end, haven't mm-hmm. you? Okay, Allie, I'm going to go Alberto. You can just do Ooh. Alberto for my tight end spot. He's going to play, and I think he's going to have to prove himself. And I think they're really going to want him to prove himself as a runner, but I think he catches a touchdown this week. All right, I will go with J- uh, Duke Johnson. Mm. It, wow, <laughs> another Johnson. And is that in your flex spot? Oh, yeah, it is in my flex spot. Wow. You really are going all in on the Johnsons. <laughs> yeah, I love the Johnsons. <laughs> you love the Johnsons. We're going to Johnsonville, baby. <laughs> oh, man. All right, one more. Oh, and I have a back-to-back. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, I need another wide receiver. Give me Seth Williams. Mm. That's pretty good. He is someone that needs to prove himself to. Yep. Um, okay, for my running back, I'm just going to uh, I'm going to go Devin Singletary. Neither of you have taken him, right? Yep. Okay, yep. so D and then S- Singletary for my running back. All right, Henry, finish us off. Wow. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Um, you too. Give me uh, Jalen Virgil. Okay, it's a solid Mr. flex. Mr. Big play last week. Yep. I, was, I don't want to give you any ideas. Um, what oh no, the, you. What are the ideas? Yep. Yeah. So then you're done, right? I need my quarterback. Oh. I will take the current NFL preseason passing leader, Matt Barkley. Wow. wow. Yeah. How much is he going to – do you think he's going to be the backup this week? See, the thing is – so he was the second one in last week behind Keenum. Right. Keenum threw five balls, and then it was all him. So the he numbers – Five passes? Yeah. And two picks? Oh, really? Yeah, he had two picks. I didn't know yep. he only threw five Oh, no, he threw passes. 18. He threw 18. Okay. okay. I don't know what I was looking at. Yeah, so he. I think he was first half Barkley, second half. Okay. So his number, he'll get squished a little bit, but I still feel good about it. He was okay. cooking. There we go. There we go. Okay, and I am going to go for my flex. I don't love this, but I'm going to go spick- sticking to the Johnson route. I'm going to go Mike Booner. Oh, nice. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't, I could not bring myself to have a single Broncos running back on my roster yep. after seeing how they ran it last year or last it's week. Fair. It's fair. <clears throat> that leaves me with only uh, a tight end position to fill. Uh, it really is just a, a question of which Eric uh, <laughs> I want. Uh, right? That's my only remaining yep. slot. Yep. Um, and so I think I will take the more versatile Eric, Eric Salbert. There we go. Okay. Wow. Eric Salbert, a guy that I have has not popped in my head in two weeks. Yeah. I'm worried about him. Yep. Okay. I'm worried about him making the roster. He's making the roster. I think worry. he may be down to just one Eric potentially, Ryan. Ooh. On 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 my on my fifty three, I did have him making it this time. Okay, hey, yep, let's go. Yep, yep. Uh, and Allie, by the way, Andrew Beck, did you sharpie him? Um, uh, he's in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett in the Pardon My Take interview, they said, "Why don't you have a fullback?" He said, "We well, do." Yep. And then I was like, <laughs> "Okay, put him in sharpie." <laughs> and then they kind of kept like pressing him, like. Who, like it's essentially to say who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, he was like, we have one. We all know <laughs> who. <laughs> we know who. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> it's obvious who. We did it. That's it. My team's gonna win. Wow. All right. Could I just get a look at that real quick? Hmm. I'm worried about Henry's team. Gonna be honest. Yeah. Wow. Me too. A lot of talent there. A lot of talent. Oh, I'm worried about Henry's team for Henry's sake. Oh no, no, no. no, 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 no. 
Look at that. Josh Allen's going to dominate. See, you're counting for two, way too much uh, yeah. on Bills starters. Mm -hmm. yep. Healthy amount, baby. Yep, a healthy amount. I like my team mostly because we have three Johnsons. Yeah, and <laughs> I literally have a Mike Booner on my team. Yep, yep. And, I mean, there's no way that Hung Young Johnson doesn't go off this week. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> uh, all right. Any, I mean, I guess we talk a little bit more about like any matchups that you're looking for. I know we talked about potential of Von Miller versus Calvin Anderson, but <clears throat> Henry, anything that stands out to you is like, hey, this is an important matchup for mm. so and so. Matchups are tough just because you don't know who's going to be out there for how long, like in the preseason. So, like Brandon Johnson, he's the big one where it feels like if he, yeah, he is. <laughs> big Brandon Johnson day on the podcast. Yeah, if he uh, if he has a big day, I mean, he's in really good shape to make the roster, and nobody could have seen that coming. So he's probably top of the list. Uh, no. um, I, I, I'm really interested to see if they can run the ball at all. Yeah. Like, that's that's a big test for me because yep. um, I kind of appreciated Nathaniel Hackett being upset after only yeah. scoring 17 points last week and running the ball terribly. Um, and... I want to see them do better with it this week. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of confidence in that happening, especially if they're going to be the twos running the ball against the Bills ones. Mm -hmm. But it's something to keep an eye on. If they can, like, I just love to see Mike Boone pop one as much as I don't want Zach to get the fantasy points. Um, I just want to see something from the running game where it's just like, okay looks like those guys understand what's happening. Yeah, um, I, I completely agree. I want to see the offensive line look good. Uh, but I want Nick Benito to flash yeah, yeah. because we've seen one flash, and I loved it. But I was probably the most hesitant of the of the three last week after he had his big mm -hmm. performance against the Cowboys, saying, I just need a little bit of consistency, and we haven't seen it since. So I just want to see him. He doesn't even have to get sacks. I just want to see him look good look, look really good and it's probably not going to happen early in the game but if he's out there in the fourth quarter playing against the twos and the threes i want to see him look good let me ask you this uh one of my buddies reached out to me they're in a dynasty league where you have multiple individual defensive players that's tough uh and he asked me he said all three of these guys are available who should i take remember dynasty league so you can keep these guys forever yeah mm -hmm. bradley chubb baron mm -hmm. browning or nick benito mm -hmm. it's gotta be chubb like it's gotta be yeah. Especially if you have a bench spot. You know, if you can just put him on IR. Yeah, I'd go if Ch <coughs> Chubb, Browning, Benito. Yep. Bradley. Maybe I'm caught up in the hype right now, but I think I would take Browning. That's fair. I mean, he's my number two. He would be the one to jump, Chubb. This, this, like, the moves and yeah. the bend and the, the first step, it all looks so real to me. Yep. It does, mm -hmm. the, there's nothing fake about it. Yep. And the fact that he has that interior uh, experience – means I think you can b bring him from a bunch of different positions on the field. Yeah. Um, it also tells you, like, he's decent against the run, mm -hmm. uh, which is something we definitely can't say about Nick Benito right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is definitely something you can say about Bradley Chubb. What I would say is that <clears throat> without a good year this year, Bradley Chubb is signing, like, a small deal somewhere yeah. as, as, like, a depth guy. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, a prove-it deal for him or a chance, a bounce-back potential deal, I should say. Yeah, I mean, look what happened with Shaq Barrett. Now, I realize Shaq Barrett wasn't drafted fifth overall, mm -hmm. but he had a very productive early start to his career in Denver, yeah. and he even had to sign a one-year $5 million deal. Yeah, now, he then exactly. damn near won Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah. Um, but I think that if you don't prove it, like, you can't just have one good season on your rookie contract and then get a big deal. Especially when that was your first year. Yeah. Absolutely. I completely and injuries agree. on top of that. Yep. You know, people yep. are going to... So... It's a massive year for him. Massive year for him. I mean, Chubb. maybe he's the... He probably has the highest ceiling. Yeah. I think. Um, but at the same time, I think, like, Baron Browning could become a star within the next two years. He could. He very totally. well could. But Bam Browning, you just or, – or not Nick Benito, just – Just too unknown. Yeah. Too that's unknown. That's fair. That's very fair. Something that's not unknown is our friends over at Green Mountain Dental, where we know them really well because we've had so many people in our family switch over to join Green Mountain Dental. And we've also had so many people within the company go over to Green Mountain Dental and only fantastic reviews. And it makes sense because they are Colorado-based uh, company. They're Colorado diehard sports fans, and they're a family-owned business. They're just 15 minutes from 
from downtown Denver in Lakewood. The CSU alum, Dr. Ben, has you covered. So if you're a Ram, you definitely got to go (laughs) over there. You know, you just do your research, Ryan, and you Mm. know, and that's what they do at Green Mountain Dental. They do their research, and they also offer you some pretty good deals. If you mention DNVR Essential, you get a $300 discount for a full orthodontics treatment for new patients. If you mention DNVR Sports, you get a free set of bleach trades, which is a $350 value with a new patient cleaning x-ray and exam. And also, they're hiring for dental hygienists if you want to get a job part-time and full-time positions are available and they work with your schedule have great health care and pto go check them out over at green mountain dental group.com that's green mountain dental group.com the notes don't say anything about dr ben yes they do <laughs> i really think well, they damn. do <laughs> <laughs> did you just make did you just erroneously <laughs> give this guy an alma mater <laughs> <laughs> there's a dr ben in here oh really yeah i think so Oh, we, yeah. we know oh, no, Dr. I ben, believe but he's Zach real. just assigned him to, to CSU. No, 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 no. Right here. Located just 15, the third paragraph down. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, there you're right. Right. Oh, there wow. Dr. Ben. Yeah, Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, shit, was Dr. <laughs> ben from Foco? That kind of makes sense. Well, I'm glad he went to a vet school because I got that dog in me. So he's oh, wow. oh, there No there CSU jokes from you. No. Well, yeah. that was kind of a CSU. Okay, yeah. fair enough. It was actually giving them credit. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. 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 Dog days of summer are almost over, which means it's hey, time dog. to see Russ cook at mile high, watch a Jokic three-peat for MVP, and uh, a championship defense led by Kale McCarr and the crew at Ball Arena. Uh, whether live and in person Man, or from the best... right off the top, wasn't it? <laughs> best <laughs> in your house. Foco has you covered with the best fan gear, gifts, and collectibles from the perfect tote, bag, and tumblers, uh, hoodies, and Henleys, bag, and, you, Henry. and, and Stanley Cup touting bobbleheads. Uh, go to Foco. It's uh, it's awesome. There's all sorts of collectibles like the stuff I said. And if you use the code DMVR, you get 10% off. There's a link in the description Description yep. below. I was going to say bio? description below. Yeah, Foco is blowing up. They're like, um, they're popping up in my Instagram feed. Wow. That's your phone listening to you. It Probably. Very much yep. is. Yeah, you're also a big Foco guy. The company. Has and there the been city. like, has anyone done a real investigation into whether our phones are listening to us? Like, I listened to a podcast about it. Um, but is anyone, what did the podcast say? The podcast said they aren't, That's um, no but way. they are paying attention to what's happening on the Wi-Fi that you're on. So like, mm. say your fiance is looking up like Gucci mm. bags. I don't know if that's something she would do. <laughs> um, Probably but, a fake one. uh, then it will show up in your Instagram feed to try and be like, Hey, Oh, uh, smart. Yeah. So like, it could just be that I was on the same, uh, wi-fi is like parker who is right, on right. Foco, or that like henry yeah. who's trying to get a new tote bag i wouldn't mind one there was one time i was covering a basketball game there was a conversation in front of me about a birthright trip to israel something i've never heard of but i guess like jewish people right. get like the free trip to israel yeah never heard of it before listen Did to the conversation <laughs> jump in <laughs> Go on to Instagram. First thing I see is an ad from Birthright Israel. Yeah. It's like, I, don't, I didn't even know what that was five minutes ago. Yeah. Like, like, they have to be listening. You're a big fan now. You just have to have Jewish blood in your family, and you oh. can go. That's pretty I don't pretty think broad. I do. Yeah. How old are you? 25. You still got a year. You can there do you it until go. you're 26. Oh, you just like the insurance. Look up the family tree. See if you can, have, you can pull oh, anything. There's got to be something, right? I, I'll, Ryan I've did. talked about this before. Yeah, I did it. Wow. Um, they actually called me. I think I've told this story before. So they call you for like an interview and you sign up for it. And they were asking me like legitimate questions about the religion. Wow. And I was just 100% guessing. <laughs> like, like, like just throwing stuff out there. And I, I like called my buddies who all had already got like in. They were the ones who told me to, to do it. And I was like, I don't think that went well. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know. They were asking me like, who's the Messiah and all this stuff. And I was like, I was like, John Elway? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, like, you guys know me. I only know sports. Um, So it was hilarious. I I just kept on, like, anytime I didn't know an answer, I would just be like, yeah, honestly, like, I don't know. That's why, you know, I want to, like, go experience this. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, And it ended up being... Uh, an all-time experience for yep. me. Yeah. Yep, I bet. Only time I've been out of this continent. Wow. Actually, I've till, been to South America. Till a couple of months from now. This is yep. the best continent, though. 
Just be clear. Oh, well, I don't have enough. Uh, <laughs> okay. I don't have enough we'll go try anymore. another. We are going to try a new one as long yes, as I get my are. passport figured out. Uh oh. Have you sent it off? <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. That really stresses people have you, out. It doesn't stress me out. Have you gotten your appointment yet? Have you gone in there? No. Clock is certainly ticking. <laughs> the clock may have can, talked. No, it's not. Because you can. it says you could, if you mail it in, you get it in four to six weeks. Or if you do the mail-in version. Yeah. So okay. I could do it week one, still be okay. Wow, <laughs> pushing it. I love it. I wouldn't. Yeah. I'm not trying to do that. I like, actually, I opened my passport this morning. Yeah, it just good? got here in the mail, yeah. Oh, hey, fresh. I'm good to go, yeah. Big time. Yep, I'm wow. official. You'll I got be, the little card, you'll too. You'll be 35 traveling on that thing. Yeah. Yeah, should have taken a better picture, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you can take your own picture, turns out. I went yep. to Walgreens. I was going to mess with it. I was late. It was, it, was, it, was, it was rough. Did you smile? No, should have. Yeah, because you know you're not allowed to anymore. Oh. Yep. Wow. Yep. Huh. That's so I'm, crazy. I'm mean mugging in mine. That sounds like something the NFL will eventually do after you score a touchdown. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> no smiles. No smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Broncos defense was smiling today. Man, that is crazy. All right, let's jump into the comments. Do we have any super chats, Allie? We do not. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. All right. Seems unlikely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I saw, I saw. First one on the website coming in from Bronco and SD says, I recently moved to San Diego and have changed my name from Bronco and SF to Bronco and SD. Huge upgrade. If there, ooh, wow. if there are any fans down here or Broncos <laughs> bar, hit me up. Also, I'm starting a dynasty league. Where would you draft Javante? Lower than everyone thinks. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. A dynasty league. I, I just don't know. Is that a first round pick? Probably is a first round People, pick. People, I mean, Kale was in here the other day, Mr. F- fantasy guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was saying, like, Javante's ADP, that's average drafted position, um, Impressive. is like eight. That blows right? my in mind. In regular leagues, not even dynasty yeah, leagues. Yeah, that blows my mind. I would not be taking him that high. I wouldn't either. I mean, to me, uh, not to, like, I, I shouldn't be giving out fantasy football strategies because I suck at fantasy yeah. football ever since <laughs> I got on the Broncos beat. Uh, and I don't really pay attention to much else. Uh, including who the Messiah is, but uh, <laughs> we'll teach you up on that one. All right, thanks. You wait. You went there. You went to Israel. Did you not learn? I drank a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Um, so, anyways, uh, my strategy would be like if you don't get Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry, um, J- Jonathan Taylor, then like just wait. Mm. Just what about Dalvin Cook? On. He's injured. Wow. He's probably already injured right yeah, now. Probably. Yeah, probably. Probably. I agree with that. Uh, yeah. It's just... Christian McCaffrey, maybe, but even then. Oh, Wait, what? no <laughs> way. I mean. He has a 96 in Madden So here's So here's the thing. The last time I won a fantasy league, so I'll give you some real perspective, I drafted both Adrian Peterson and Peyton Manning coming off of injuries. Wow. They both were great. One, two, and MVP. I dominated the league. 2012. So you got, kind of got to take some risks. Wow. Like, okay. okay. But not Dalvin Cook. That is a while ago. That is a <laughs> Just while Just Christian ago. McCaffrey. Nathan <laughs> Wheeler says, gentlemen, it's been a long time since I've commented, but y'all continue to kill it. I'm going to, I'm going to be headed to the Bills game this weekend. We'll love to meet up. One. How do you think the defensive line shakes out? And are you confident in it? And two, my wife is wondering where the heck the Bachelor talk went. I know Henry is a big mm, fan. The Bachelor jumped the shark. Yeah. I guess it still exists. It does. Yeah. Um, it really lost know. me. Two women on there now. Was it Claire, Allie? It was Taisha slash Claire. Yeah. Season. So Claire's season's the last one I watched. Um, like two episodes in, she was like, I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm in love with this guy. And just ended the whole thing right then and there. And I was like, well, this is dumb. Obviously, they didn't survive. Um, the next, the one that's currently then, happening is... Can I finish my story? Then they brought in <laughs> this other girl, and that season continued to suck, and it just mm, lost me forever. Yeah, okay, it's tough. That's I thought you were right. Okay. Um, right now, it's two girls who got, had to like... It was two girls with like the same amount of men as usual. And so they had to like oh, kind of compete, of like who they would agree on who they both the, like. This is the thing they jumped they the shark. So now they're yeah. di- they're reaching. Yeah. yeah. So right, I don't watch it anymore either. But right now, I have heard the drama is I'm sure a lot because the guys notch. are liking both yeah. girls and then having to choose one, and it, it they I think they messed up. I don't know. I may have to now. get in now. If you're one of the guys, there's definitely a strategy to this. You just go 
You instantly one girl one. you're like i only have eyes for you yeah. and that probably gets you to hometown it's like yep first yeah. night yep it probably does i mean if the goal is just to like win the game well that yeah, if you want to like game yeah. show <laughs> meet a wife then maybe you, maybe you talk to both a little if you want to meet your wife i'm not quite sure going on this show is Look, the best thing the only yeah uh. exactly the only reason you go on this show is to try to become famous it's to boost your instagram following yes 100%. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it works maybe you have like a candle company right, yeah. that you want to yeah. blow up afterwards no a lot of them are uh, music career yeah a lot of them are music career or uh um, entrepreneurs. I mean, you could easily get like a hundred thousand Instagram followers. Out yep. Oh yeah, easy. Yep. You don't even have to be good. No, no. you just have to be tan. You just have to show yep. up. Yeah. <laughs> before <laughs> before Henry had a girlfriend, we talked about would he make it to hometowns? Hundred mm. percent. How would it go? I think he would. I could play the game. He's the hometown heartbreak. <laughs> I could play uh-huh. the game. Yeah. Oh but see, I just so wouldn't... love is just a game to you, Henry. No. <laughs> Sometimes answer. she watches. Smart answer. Uh, the, the, the the bachelor would be more fun, obviously. Being there's like, the bachelor, course, yeah. There's like, there's like thirty fun. of them. Use. Uh, uh, oh, you know, even, you're making it to the end. Exactly. No maybe, stress. Maybe I'm being out. like too um, nice here. I don't. I wouldn't like like having to break all those hearts. Oh, uh, you say you're not a heartbreaker, huh? No, I just, I feel like that would suck. Like making people cry is like one of the worst things ever. Yeah, I agree. But wouldn't it be cool to do that and go on trips around the world and be surrounded by all these people as opposed to being out night one? Oh, I wouldn't be out night one. <laughs> oh, I knew <laughs> no you were going to No shot. Oh, uh, so yeah. There's your bachelor talk for you. <laughs> <laughs> we got it for your uh, your girlfriend there, or your wife, Nathan. Um, By next the way, one. you're going to have to do the comments today. Oh, wow. Okay, well, we know what's Henry, coming. you want to get in? I could. You want to get this one? It's for you. Big Hank stand. There we go. The Melvin disrespect is laughable from media, not you guys, and from the team. Gordon is by far the better back. In most cases, Williams isn't even the same league as Melvin. Wow. Oh, There's a reason that Melvin is still a starter or should be in this league after seven seasons. And as for the fumbles, he literally had only one more fumble than Williams, and that one should have been charged to Turnstile, a.k.a. Noah Fant, who couldn't block <laughs> his languid out. self out of a Gatorade-soaked paper bag. This is reading... a. Uh, Mr. Big Hank stands comments on your first comment in yeah, years. Yeah. That's a challenge. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a challenge. You're not even halfway through there. Man but. has a vocabulary. Um, I'm not saying Williams couldn't meritoriously take the reins from Flash, but until proven otherwise, Melvin is and should be the man. Even last season, folks said, "Oh, it's only a matter of time before Javante takes over." Hackett is wrong on this, unless it's solely a motivational tactic. Tactic. And yes, OTAs are optional. If you want to wear the minimal amount of flair for a team that barely seemed to want him, I get it. But mark my words. Nice you can see it in reference. I know it was. <laughs> you can see it in Melvin's eyes that he's ready to prove himself, not that he should have to. And don't start with the angry runs chat. Those are cool, those are great, but the only account for about one fifth of a what of a, well, one fifth of what a complete back needs to be doing. Gordon's vision is better, he's faster, he's a better pass blocker. He reads defenses better. He's a better route runner. Williams could catch up quickly, no doubt. But why people want to crown his ass so early is beyond me. Barring injury, Flash will triumph, and Hank will subsequently buy me a pizza. Love oh, the stand. Oh, there we go. What, so what's the pizza about again? <laughs> um, More yards I, from scrimmage? Yep. Okay, and he has Melvin, obviously. I've got Javante. And you've got Javante in the big T. 100% agrees with big Hank stand. Uh-huh. Sorry. Someone had an interesting point uh, yesterday. Where they said there was a lot of they and I in Melvin Gordon's press conference. As opposed to we. As opposed to we and us. Uh, and I, I listened back and I was like, wow, really, he does Me feel too. like he's like an outcast almost. Like just trying to, pr- just trying to prove he's worthy. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, he, I think he feels like he's being uh, <clears throat> done wrong by the team. Or at least not, I shouldn't say done wrong, not given a fair shot yeah. at this. Yeah. However... We all knew this was coming at some yep. point, whether it was last year, whether it was this year, whether it was next year. Javante Williams is a second round running back that the Broncos Drafted traded to be a bell up for. Exactly. Who lived so, up to the hype in year one? 
too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it, I'm not saying that it's right that they're just crowning him, but we all knew this was coming. And Melvin is a better running back than Javante in some in some situations. And yeah. I do think the fumbles, specifically last year, were a little blown out of proportion because Mel or Javante did have two, Melvin had three. Uh, but there are ways that Melvin's a better running back, and it's going to be about finding the best use for both of them. Melvin's, you could write a great story about just like Melvin's arc in denver mm-hmm. because almost everything off the field has like broken against him oh, yeah. he came in he had to like go head to head with philip Lindsay, everyone's mm-hmm. favorite player for his job yeah. yeah um so people were already like essentially rooting against him from the second he got here yeah uh, then he has the dui yep um and that gave people who were already rooting against him something new yep and then you add in the fumbles as well yep which did happen in louder situations than javante's totally. i can't even tell you when javante's fumbles were agree was one of them against the commanders slash football team at the end when they were just trying to run the clock out and they like fumbled it? I thought that was Melvin. Okay. Could have been, maybe. Uh, maybe it was. Because it was an important situation. Yeah. And... So there you go. Uh, I think they both fumbled, but they recovered Javante's. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Probably. I think that's what happened. That was one of the wildest, worst games I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, then you add in those fumbles and it's just like one thing after another has yeah. given the fan. He's. Never been in the good graces of the fans, but I've been pounding that drum all off season. Yeah. Like he is the better running back right now. Mm-hmm. And the worst part of all of it was that, I mean, the first thing he said when he came here was, "Oh, I'm just so excited. I want to be somewhere where there's a good <laughs> fan base. I just want to have good <clears throat> fans." You know, I was out there with the Chargers and the Broncos would come in and it'd be packed with all their fans, and I just want fans. And and <laughs> then he came here and he he had to compete with Philip Lindsay, and then everybody's hands it. Like it's just. It's sad. And, I mean, everything you say here is true. I mean, Gordon's vision's better. Yep. He's faster. Yep. Better pass blocker. Yep. Reed's defense is better. Yep. Better route runner. Yep. And it's not everything. Like, Javante breaks tackles a little bit more and some of that sort of stuff. But yep. he's younger. Melvin's really good. Yeah. Yep. He has. And it, it honestly should be a good problem for the Broncos this year. It is. It's, just, it's such an interesting mm-hmm. – I mean, even going – remember – Last year, going back to like Melvin's quotes, where he's like, "I know the fans hate me" or something like I that. Know. It's just crazy. Yep. The whole arc is is a shame, honestly. Yep. It really is. Hopefully, it really is. He makes some really big plays and big moments for the team this year and, and turns it around. For, yeah, for I the, I completely yeah. agree. Melvin Broncos says, "My boys, I can't believe Zach said he'd be happy to lose to the Seahawks in Week One <laughs> if it meant there were no injuries in preseason." Losing to them could cost a playoff spot or home field advantage. If you were a mad scientist building the perfect quarterback, brain, arm strength, speed, and then scrambling ability, which player would you choose? Obviously, Peyton is the brain. What say you? Hold on. If losing to the Seahawks could cost you a playoff, I'm not even going to say any names here, but what would certain players getting hurt, and I'll still touch wood, uh, do for your playoff chances. And when we talk about this conversation about playing starters, there's one starter that we yes. have at the front of our minds. So <laughs> when I say you're losing a starter for multiple games or for the season, I'm talking about number three, obviously. You cannot tell me that Sean McDermott wouldn't feel like an absolute idiot if you know uh, Josh Allen, and I'll even touch wood for him, gets like a helmet to the elbow and has a fractured arm or something. Mm-hmm. 100%. And actually... Um, he announced that today that the starters are playing, and a, a prominent beat reporter out in Buffalo wrote uh, a column saying how it was absolutely stupid for them to be doing that. It is. Yeah. It's a. It's a. In my opinion, it's just like a weird football guy thing. Yep. Yeah. And and I I say credit to uh, to Hackett for not just feeling like he has to do what most of the NFL does. He knows that. His job is dependent on certain players being healthy and good. Number one. Or number three. Yep. Yeah. Let Russ Cook says, howdy, gents. Hank, pizza bet? You win if starting offense gets two drives in preseason or <laughs> does not score first on their first two drives of the season. Oh, I wait, win. Score first? Score on their first oh, okay. two drives of the regular season. I win if starting offense does not get two drives in the preseason and scores on one of their first two drives against the Seahawks. Thanks for the pot as always. Okay, so the only way he wins is if no, starters don't play at all yep. and they score on the first two drives. You get all um, other one of options. The first two drives, yep. I'll counter with if we can make three points a push. If they get one field goal on two drives, that's a push. More than three points, they get two field goals, they get a touchdown, you win. Under three, no points at all, I win. I'll take that. 
I think it's fair. Okay, I sure. sign off sure. on that. Okay. okay. There you go. Let us know. I always uh, like when there's a nice middle ground on yo, a bet. Absolutely. Let us know, let Russ cook. Next one coming in from Aaron Ray. Hey, Henry, feel free to jump in anytime, but I'm just going to keep good. rolling. <laughs> What's going on, my Gs? As much as I'm obsessively wanting to see the starters play, please do not put them on the field in the preseason. The injury gods have not been nice to us over the last few seasons, and we already lost Tim Patrick. Beating the shit out of the Cowboys during the joint practices was enough for me. We'll have plenty practice against the Seahawks. Also, am I the only true Broncos fan in my inner circle, or I am the only true Broncos fan in my inner circle, and with everything that has happened this offseason, I have, I have nobody to share these feelings with, so I started my own show on YouTube. Uh, LOL. Would love for all the homies to check it out. It's called the Broncos Fan Cast, and a- at Aaron J Broncos is my Taking Twitter handle. Taking the old uh, Denver Rivals approach. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you. Stay blessed. <laughs> all you got to do is buy a subscription. Free ads. Free ads. <laughs> yep. Free ads. I'm just kidding. Um, they're not going to play, so don't worry. Yep, yep. they are not going to play. And every coordinator, well, I should say the offensive and defensive coordinator, made it very clear that they are 100% on board with this. Yep. Uh, someone on, I think in our YouTube comments, po- had a great point when they said um, the Broncos starters played in the preseason last year and they got a second preseason <laughs> against <laughs> the Jets, Giants, and Jags, and yeah. they it still didn't do anything yeah, for them. True. I was like, wow, that's they got six preseason games. Last year, the Rams sat 35 players in the preseason. Wow. That's 11 wild. offense, 11 defense, three special teams. And I would guess they aren't even, but that would be 25. So that's yeah. 10 more of just like rotational guys who didn't even see the field. Wow. I mean, that's what Ivaro said today. If you've proven that you're going to play in the regular season, you don't need to play in the preseason. Smart. It's really smart. I agree. Dan Burke says, hey, guys, you probably already touched on Brandon Johnson's performance today, but if you haven't, was it as good as media reporting or are you, are comfor- or are you comfortable putting him as a sixth receiver? Well, yeah, I mean, some were blown away by his performance. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. Uh, yeah, it, he had a really good performance, and Russ trusted him. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's he, number one. Yep. It seems like he's in the lead for that spot. I mean, Jalen Virgil's made some great plays. Seth Williams is right around there, too. But Brandon Johnson seems like he has the lead for now. Have you watched any of his college highlights? I bet they're sick. No, I've been meaning yeah, to go I back. I bet they are. Because yeah. he just has, like, he, he just seems like he makes crazy catches. Yeah, I, I completely. 6'2", that's yeah. pretty good size for, where was he from? UCF? Yep, yep. exactly. Oh, then you get to watch Black and Gold, too. Yeah, yeah, you get to watch Five. the National Champs. Howie Boot My Boomer says, Amigos, not throwing shade, but is Billy Turner the new Juwan James? Oh, wow. Dude That's never shade. seems to be healthy. <laughs> I like the guy, and I'm rooting for him, but I fear the worst. Damn, I hadn't. I wouldn't even think about Juwan James when we were talking about most hated right tackles. He's like yes. one, yep. one with a bullet. Yeah, exactly. He is. Uh, no, he's not. I mean, we're talking about a guy who played what? A couple games in a three-year contract? Yeah, 17 snaps, right? That's it in the whole contract? Or 30. I think it was 36 snaps or something like that. I think it was 46 snaps one year and then okay. 17 the okay. next. Okay, yep, yep. It's so under 60 snaps. But I could be wrong. Yeah, that was, that was rough. Billy Turner, I don't know. I've got my fingers crossed because if not, like I'm going to have to worry about Boye Mafe in week one wow yeah that would be that would (laughs) be bad uh i'm worried about billy turner not being juan james but worried about his health at the beginning of this season and for however long it goes because he's been hurt not just for training camp but all the way in the otas as well after tonight's game you'll be worried about boy amafe that's my prediction i'm not gonna worry about him unless the they have to trot out a third string tackle Uh, i think after tonight you're not gonna care who's out there wow He's going up against the Bears. <laughs> exactly. Two sacks are, last week, probably two more this week. Woo. It's called the Jonathan Cooper track. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and I believe last one coming in from Def Wu says, Zach, the fan of me couldn't disagree more with your take on losing to Seattle week one. <laughs> with all the crap the 12s have done this offseason, serving them a big old hump, helping of humble pie week one will be nothing short of of euphoric well people these people aren't thinking of the other no, they, side of they, your they, argument they are not also starting the season losing a game we sh- we should win will likely come back to bite us later in the year just make seattle pay for the disrespect they've given to russ 
as Ryan has said. I'm not saying let's lose to Seattle. No, no, no. I'm saying I'd rather lose that and have Russell Wilson week two yes. and, and the rest of the season than not have him. He says, also, several centers around the league have gone down with injuries already. Could Graham Glasgow be a sleeper trade candidate? I mean, he's been right up there at the top of the list. I'm Malik Reed, probably right in front of him. Graham Glasgow, number two. I just like have this feeling that Nathaniel Hackett loves Graham Glasgow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see them vibing on a personal yes. level. And, and then also, now, today was really bad for the offense, so I'm sure Glasgow didn't look good yeah. in practice, but I'm sure a lot of guys didn't. Uh, to have a veteran backup for center and guard, what a luxury to have. So, yes, I think he's a trade candidate, but I don't think they're just going to like dump him for a seventh. I think some team would have to give up something actually valuable to make it happen. Remind me um, to listen to... Like when the Broncos sign a free agent and then the other team's media talks about them, remind me to listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, who are you thinking about when you say that? A lot of guys. Um, number one is Juwan James. Yes. Like yeah. they, that one we fought back on so hard, but Miami like media were legitimately, the yeah, I mean, yeah. They said, oh, John Elway sat on the whoopee cushion. It was like <laughs> yeah. said by an a executive in Miami. Yeah. Um, and then Graham Glasgow. Uh, I remember listening to the radio. I don't even know what station it was, but they had a Lions reporter on mm. after the Broncos signed Graham Glasgow, and they were asking about him, and he was just like, yeah, I mean, he's okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and that's right. exactly what he's been. Yep. Like, yep. He's been yep. okay, I guess. Yep, it's very true. Um, so I got I to gotta keep that in mind. He was, he was really good in that first preseason game against backups, but there was at least that one thing you can look at and be like, hey, maybe. You just hope that I think we they don't... even said like yeah he wasn't even like fully the starter he was like rotating yeah. for most of the season yeah. it was like jeez all right we just hope that the Broncos aren't having to sign big time free agents anymore because that was the great thing about John Owey's career in the early part was mm-hmm. when he was getting hits but then when he wasn't able to attract the top level guys but you're still paying top level money typically those free agents aren't going to be good yeah yeah it is exciting though when you get like a, an it awesome is. free agent like, it look, is. the Broncos haven't oh, gotten yeah. like a true like just fully top top line free agent in a while yeah but I swear? It, he he yeah. probably would have been the guy but even at that point he's older so it's not like he's resetting the market would kareem you know? jackson be the most recent like hit, yeah like mm-hmm. knocked it out of the park mm-hmm. kind of thing but john elway yeah. was so good at paying like second tier money to guys who just like broke out like dominique rogers cromarty turned down that contract yeah. he's offered it to akib talib and then akib talib was one of the two best corners in the nfl yeah yeah Yep. And T.J. Ward played up. Darian Stewart played up. Yep. That's, Darian Stewart really did. Yeah, but that's Emmanuel how you do Emmanuel Sanders it. played up. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. He was not Emmanuel Sanders before getting here. No. Yeah, he was just like an afterthought to Antonio Brown. Yep, exactly. Yep. Pretty crazy. Yeah, yep. They did really knock. I mean, the offensive ones are, to me, is just like you could put anyone on Peyton Manning's offense and they're going to look really it's good. But mm-hmm. um the defensive ones were, were really impressive. Mm-hmm. Case Keenum did not play up. <laughs> the quarterbacks <laughs> did not. <laughs> he didn't training camp. He'll uh, always he have that. Did. He will. And always his will. book. He'll and he'll probably book. like carve up the Broncos this week. Oh, he'll man. He'll have that for himself. At least year. it's preseason. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be able to put that in the, the insert. Well, and he, he beat the Broncos. <laughs> it's the true. He'll be, he beat the Broncos last year. Oh, my God. That yep. game was so yep. bad. It was, yeah, it was awful. That was so bad. Uh, we're out of those days now. Uh, and we're good? We're done? We're nope. good. Done. Oh. No last seconds? Wait, one more. One more. Oh. One more. From Bronco Oilers. Nice. Right, right now, there doesn't seem to be a ton of separation as far as who has the best offense in the AFC West. If we're to look at defenses in the AFC West, do you feel there is a more significant gap between the four teams? If so, how big and where do we stack up? Mm. I'm I'm really com- I'm pretty confident in saying the Broncos are the best defense in the AFC West. Now, obviously, the Chargers probably have the most talented defense in right. the AFC West, um, and we'll see how that plays out. Um, again, I'm just going off of what I read on Twitter. Yeah. It kind of feels like the Cowboys are like bullying the Chargers in joint practices. Really? Yeah. Like, did you see the video of? Um, Zeke truck sticking a guy and his helmet flew off. No. Yeah. The defender's was, helmet? Yeah. Like wow. he comes into him. Zeke just like runs him over with his shoulder. His helmet goes flying. Wow. Um, and then there was like a couple other things about how the Cowboys were balling. And I actually kind of trust the Cowboys media yeah. because they were dunking on them last <laughs> week. It's very yeah. true. Um, so that's interesting. But 
I would say the gap between the Broncos and Chargers defenses, uh, at least skill wise, is pretty big drop then to the Chiefs and Raiders. Yes, absolutely. Completely agree. Who's three and four though? I think Chiefs are three. I think the Chiefs are three. The they're still like missing pieces, but I think that pass rush is gonna be solid. Like George Carlaftis. Their first round pick, he's gonna be good this year. Yeah. He might not get double digit sacks, but he's gonna be right up against it. They yeah, losing Honey Badger pick. is yeah huge. Bring yeah. in Justin Reed though, like that's definitely. I yes. think I think he's not the same, but he's I good. think of the Justin Reed edition that kind of puts it just above the Raiders for me. But, but the Raiders yeah. are the same. They do have what should be a good pass rush with Chandler yeah. Jones and Max Crosby. Yeah, pass rush only goes as far as your secondary will take you. And, and exactly why, one, exactly that's, that, that, that's why I'm putting the Chiefs just a, a little bit, of, but ahead of them. But I agree, Ryan. The the Chiefs and Raiders are down here. The Broncos and Chargers are way up here. We'll see if Justin Reed can play this role or even if they want him to. Right. Tyron Matthew was a freak in the sense that you essentially never even had to assign him anything on a play. You were just like, the yeah. field. Just cover the field. And, and he's smart. Yeah. Like, he would line everybody up, tell everybody what to do, like, what's coming. And Justin Reed, I'm sure, is smart too, but that's that's definitely a big transition, and that those are big shoes to fill. If you just like, I bet you if you just saw, like, a hot map of the plays, the places in which Tyron Matthew made plays on the field last year – it would be insane everywhere because yeah. he's just making he's like making an interception in the flat he's also yeah. making an interception deep down the field yeah. he's making a big hit in the backfield you're like how is this guy everywhere mm, yep you know like he's intercepted like i remember him just like baiting drew lock into an interception and it's just like god this guy's just like <laughs> yeah. he's on another level you know yeah yep. um, and Often, i just don't think oh, justin reed's quite there offensively i feel like the gap between all four isn't that wide no i do think the broncos maybe are number four though We'll see. Yeah, the running game I think is can be the great equalizer yep. there. Yeah, definitely. And the offensive line is what scares me. Yep, a ton. Yeah, I guess should say right tackle. The offensive line is is a problem for everyone. It is. It, that yeah, is yeah, true. yeah, yeah. I'm just worried specifically about right tackle going up against Joey Bosa, uh, going up against um, Chandler Jones, going up against Khalil Mack. Just in this division, how important that's going to be. I'm having a premonition of just Patrick Mahomes, like, really frustrated. Mm. It just keeps c- popping up into my head yeah. of just him on the sidelines, like, so frustrated because, it's, like, the, the receivers suck, uh, mm-hmm. and it's just, like, nothing's coming together for them on offense. That's so it. just in general, not even against the Broncos? No, just in general. Mm. I think he's going to be really frustrated this year. I like it. I like it. That'd be good news. It would be. Yep. All right. That wraps it up. That's it. That wraps it up for the week. Uh, so we will see you guys. Not really the week. We'll see you guys after the game on Saturday. <laughs> Saturday uh, right around 2. Yep, right around 2 o'clock, which is awesome. Nice little early preseason game. Wake up, watch the Broncos, and then have all Saturday night to do whatever you want. So that'll be fun. Um, so, yeah, catch us right after the game right here at DNVR YouTube or wherever you catch your podcast. We'll see you then.